This is episode 24 of the Christian Travelers podcast. Today, I'm going to be sharing about how I saw God at the State Fair. Welcome to the Christian Travelers Network, where travel stories, community, and scripture combine. Hey, Christian Travelers, I am so glad that you are here. Today, I'm going to be talking about my experience at the State Fair this summer and how I saw God show up there. But before I do, I wanted to take a moment to encourage you to leave a review for this podcast on your favorite podcast platform. If we see it, we'll acknowledge you on our podcast. We love hearing your feedback about the amazing things that you enjoy about this podcast, and it keeps it present and prevalent for others looking for faith and travel tips. Well, since I was little, I was involved in 4-H, which if you haven't heard of that before, it's an organization that typically runs from 4th through 12th grade, and then they also have a college program as well. But its goals are to teach people how to be in service to their community, but also to learn a variety of different skills that will equip them in the present, but also in the future. Specifically, some things that I think of is fairs, county fairs. Every summer there are county fairs where students bring in projects of all different things from uh, robots to cooking to photography to graphic design to agriculture and uh, working with animals all kinds of different things and they spend the year like learning different skills and then they present in front of a judge and the judge critiques them they have a write-up that they have to do and then the judge critiques what they've been working on and then they reward them a ribbon based upon that and then a select few get considered for the state fair and then go on and so then your project competes at a state level where you can get all sorts of rewards for that and oftentimes depending on your ribbons you also get a monetary award as well but some of the skills that I learned through that would be like interviews. We had practice interviews for trips that we got to go on where we had to present our knowledge and I learned a lot of different tools. Like I would have never tried woodworking and I probably wouldn't be good at baking things. Um, I definitely wouldn't know how to sew. I know these sound kind of home ec things, but little renovations around your house or fixing little things on your outfit so that they last longer. Like those are skills that most people don't know anymore. And I know those, but I know more advanced skills as well. And so I could make my own clothing if I just am not thrilled with what I find in a store. And those are like awesome skills to know that I have in my toolbox and ones that I want to pass on to my kids. So every single year, my parents would always require two things of us. We'd always have to sew an outfit and we would always have to do an educational presentation. And then we got a free range of whatever other projects we wanted to do each year and uh me and my sister we would always like put down like 20 to 30 different projects because I mean at the time I didn't really process the fact that my parents were paying for this but cool I I want to decorate my room I want to I want to build a new like we just have all these ideas and it, it was too hard to narrow it down and our parents, you know, would pay for it so we could just make whatever we wanted and it was super cool. And we totally did complain because who wants to do the write-ups and like the grunt work of all of those projects? No one really wants to do it. But then like by the time I was in high school, I realized there were some awesome skills there. So I know I just like went on this whole rampage to get to the point that Typically, my family goes on to State Fair for an educational presentation. It's just an amazing blessing that we have, something we've regularly gotten to go for. As a result, my brother got to go on the State Fair for two of his educational presentations, and our whole family went out there for the day. And um, as normal, we start off the morning with the presentation. Nathan got a seal of excellence, which is the highest reward you can have. And that was really exciting. But then we went around and ex- explored the State Fair. And I won't lie, I love the State Fair. It's really cool. It's really fascinating. But recently, 
I was jumping in a trampoline park and I landed wrong and my knee popped out of place and so I was just kind of like hobbling along everywhere and the stuff we went to see was cool but it's kind of to some extent like it's the same thing every year in the sense that like the buildings each building has a specific theme so this building is where all the photography is and this building is where all the woodworking projects is and so like after a few years, you just kind of like, okay, I've seen it, da da da. And so that was kind of the mindset that I was in. By the end of the day, I looked back and realized I had been missing all of the God moments that had been happening during this trip. For one, our family ran into an old family friend. It was this mom who sat down with us and was just talking with my sister. My sister had been, I don't know, she's super nerdy and she's going on to grad school soon and she spent her summer studying proteins and the effects on the eyes. And this just triggered this incredible story from this mom that we ran into. And she was telling us how a few years ago her daughter had been having pain behind her eyes. The doctors prescribed some medicine when they finally put her on this medicine, she had just gone back from a trip and she took the prescribed amount one day and then the next day. And when she woke up that second day, she went up to her mom and was like, mom, it's gray. Half of you is missing. Her mom sent her to a room and called the pharmacy And the pharmacy said, whatever you do, don't take her to the ER, take her directly to an eye doctor, and I don't want to scare you, but your daughter could go permanently blind. And so this mom called her husband and her other daughter and was like, okay, this is, I just need you to come home. This is what's going on. She called the eye doctor and the eye doctor said, I'm playing golf right now. I can be there in 30 minutes. I don't want to freak you out. But again, she could go permanently blind. So she got her daughter into the car. And by this point, less and less, she was seeing less and less of things. She starts driving there and they get halfway there and her daughter starts throwing up. They let her just pull over and she threw up outside of the car. She gets back into the car and she's like, mom, I I can't see anything. It's just pitch black now. And so they drive and they get to the eye doctor and the eye doctor holds her hand and walks her in the door and sets her down on the chair, putting eye drops on her in certain amounts. And he's like, we just need to get the pressure down in her eyes. We need to get the pressure down. And she's continuing to throw up, freaking out. And the mom's crying and The daughter's concerned because fair's next week and she's still got projects to get done and this is nine in the morning and it continues all day long, just eye drops after eye drops until four o'clock at night and he's like, you know, I've never ever seen this happen. I've heard of people take this drug and two or three months from now, they start to have blurry vision. But for them to just totally lose their sight in 48 hours... That's completely unheard of. They go home and she's like, am I going to be permanently blind? The the eye doctor said, I don't know. Your mom's going to keep giving you the eye drops and we'll just, we just kind of have to wait out because there's nothing else we can do. And so they came in the next morning and she still couldn't see anything. And that Sunday... Uh, They went to church and she snuck in the back door and left early so no one would come up to her and ask her why she has sunglasses on or what's going on because she still really couldn't see. But by the time three weeks had gone by, she slowly got her sight back bit by bit by bit until there's only one little bitty corner left where she can't see. And that's kind of where she's at now. And while this mom was telling us this story, I was just crying because a high school student to go through that, to to suddenly be in this situation that you just don't have control over, and I know we take it for granted our five senses on a daily basis. There's so many gifts and talents that God gives us, and we take them for granted every single day, and we put our identity in those things oftentimes more than God, and that sense of just losing your sight your whole life situation to totally be changed in an instant. 
that's so scary. And this daughter just had such bravery. The mom was talking about how, you know, there's worse things in the world than losing your sight. Like I could lose an arm or a leg or have died or, you know, there's so many other things that could have happened. But God took away my sight, but he also gave it back to me. And to think the doctor, you made a pie and to think she wouldn't have been able to follow the recipe had she totally lost her sight permanently. All those little things. And then this leaves her in this situation where she's so much more conscientious of the the reality of people who are blind, the, the struggles they would have, and God's totally directing her future and using that instance in such an impactful way. So the fact that we ran into that family, first of all, was an amazing blessing. But second of all, getting to hear an amazing story of how God is active in lives. And not everyone's story ends positively with their sight coming back. But the heart that this daughter had to be able to recognize, like, there are worse things in the world. And that, you know, God's going to be with her whether she got her sight back or not. Mm. All the feelings. But yeah, so that was one of those God moments and... I may have been focused on my knee at the state fair, but God was doing some greater things and there was reason to be joyful. Even if my knee hurt, you know, there's so many reasons to be joyful. And the other one was I went to a For King and Country concert with my mom and brother uh, at the very end of our night there. And I've never actually heard them in person. Like, I I knew pretty much all of their songs. But I had never actually heard them in concert. And my brother, this was his first concert ever. And my mom, um, she knew some of their songs. Not all of them, but she knew a good amount of them. And we're sitting there and we're, like, exhausted at the end of the day of the state fair. And we're kind of, like, on the fence. Like, was this such a great idea? And as soon as they started playing, it was just such a unique thing. It was a lot like uh, last week I talked about how... We went to this youth conference and there were 22,000 people there worshiping and it's just great to be reminded you're not alone. This was very different in the fact that like this is a state fair where people of all walks of life come and yet there was a mass amount of people worshiping God at a local event and that was just incredibly cool. They were very personal, and they were fun, and they were real, and they talked about deep topics like sex trafficking, and depression, and anxiety, and drug addiction, and they just talked to them about our God is so much powerful than these struggles that we have. And one of the uh, songs that they played was Priceless. I don't know if you know this song. Um, It's a really impactful song, but before they played it, they, they stopped, and they were talking about how... In society, women oftentimes are, like, judged on appearances and how there's just expectations put upon us to live and act a certain way. We're degraded if we don't appear in this certain light. But we have this awesome God who doesn't see us by worldly labels. He sees us as this beautiful woman of God who God created unique and special and with purpose and intention and a direction for them and with that they then broke into the song priceless and during it a couple got engaged which is totally beautiful that you know I, I I was thinking through my head like we didn't we didn't see it on the screens or anything but they they acknowledged that it happened because they saw it from the stage and clearly this couple love for king and country and he probably wasn't able to like say much over the loud volume of the speakers But with that introduction, he was in a way saying, like, recognize you for the beauty that God has made you to be, and I want to marry you. So that was really pretty. But then at the very end of it all, the, I don't know if it was like just the state fair itself or the concert, they ended with a fireworks show. And in the background, they had some of their music playing and talking about how we're loved by God and I don't think I've ever seen a prettier fireworks show, not because it was this extravagant thing, but because you get, you go through this whole concert, you're worshiping Jesus, and then at the end, you see all these bright lights that are just like shining in, in this world, and you just feel, I'm a bright light. 
I'm, I'm a reflection of God. I'm shining and I'm unique. And with this Christian music playing in the background and the fireworks going off, I don't know. It just was a very touching thing in my heart. And it made me feel somehow deeper connected to God in that moment and f- feeling his love in a very personal way. So I'm not saying that state fairs are bad, even if you've been to them like 10 years in a row and, you're, and your knee hurts and you have a good idea of what to expect. But I am saying that when you travel, um, if it's to a state fair or if it's anywhere just to work or out for lunch or to go grocery shopping, that there are these moments that happen where we can reconnect with a family friend or we're worshiping with others and God is moving and he's speaking into our hearts and sometimes it takes us pausing and looking back to see that he was there. But the more we practice that, the more we practice at the end of the day before we go to bed reflecting on just God was here and he spoke into my life today and he reminded me that he's powerful and amazing the more likely we're to see him in the moment and to remember that there are things far greater than the struggles that we're going through right now and to remember that he is far greater than the struggles we're going through right now. So with that, I want to encourage you to share some of your stories on our Facebook group or on Instagram telling us about some of your experiences where God's changed your perspective um, looking back from things not going so great to God's here and he is present and his love is enduring. Share some of your stories of how you've seen him active in your life in incredible ways. We would love for you to join our discussion on Facebook and Instagram. So without further ado, God's blessings and safe travels.